Bismillah. Um, we'll have the question answer session now. So if you do have any questions, then please do raise your hands. One uh, question which was emailed was about the point I said that Amirul Mu'mini salam also had very difficult life from childhood. I explained the difficulties of the Prophet to some extent, but we didn't have time to talk about Imam Ali. Some people, uh, or one person maybe asked. So, Imam Ali had difficult childhood. Why? For many reasons. One was because his father was not very rich. So the children were divided and given to different relatives. So of course this had a good, you know, good outcome for Imam Ali that then he was adopted by you know, Prophet. So he has spent most, most of the time with Prophet. But as a child, it must be emotionally difficult. Even if you are living with your cousin, to be away from your father, for, from your mother is difficult. But also he was a very patient child, according to some historical sources. For example, Aqil, you know, Aqil later became blind, but even from childhood had some problem with his eye. So they wanted to put some medicine in the eyes of Aqil, but he used to refuse. So they had to put first in the eye of Imam Ali, and then say, look, your brother, you know, let us do this. We, let's put in your... So, although he's healthy, he's so obedient that he lets his parents put oil in medicine in his eyes so that his brother would be happy. And when he was just 10 years old, Islam started. And you know, those 13 years in Mecca were full of difficulties, full of challenges. So he didn't have, you know, nice childhood, you know, you know, just enjoying your childhood with your parents and, you know, going to a school and, you know, going to park and, you know, holidays. Very challenging time. Three years in Sheva Abi Talib as a teenager. It's not easy, you know, three years of all these difficulties. Then witnessing that Muslims are being killed, are being tortured. And... Then in Medina, 10 years of difficulties, you know, battles, fights, munafiqin inside. Then after the Prophet passed away, 25 years of most difficult times. And then when he himself became Khalifa, he had problem coming from Qasatin, Mariqin, Nakithin. The battles of Jamal, Nahrawan, Safin. So his life was full of challenges and difficulties. But these challenges and difficulties were signs of this man being a man who has a special mission in this world. And he gained through these challenges so much of nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he became master for the faithful. Okay, this was a question which was emailed. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum as um, You mentioned that uh, at, um, <coughs> Quran was uh, attractive. Yes. Why is it not becoming attractive at this time when we read, uh, and especially with our generations and kids, we struggle a lot to make them enjoy reading Quran and read it. And why it does it not become really attractive? And when we talk with them, read the, we translate it to make them enjoy it. They don't enjoy it. They keep saying it's boring. I read it a lot. I, I don't know. Why does it not become attractive in this generation anymore? There are different reasons. One is because they don't understand Arabic. Those people not only understood Arabic, they were masters of Arabic. So who is enjoying, for example, reading Shakespeare? 
someone who is struggling with his English would not enjoy that, you know, would hate, you know, said, why it is so difficult? I prefer, you know, to read a story for children than Shakespeare. But a person who is master of language would know that there is value in every line of this text. So we don't have, unfortunately, knowledge of Arabic. We don't have knowledge of the subjects which are taught in the Quran. And also, our hearts are not yet opened to the light of the Quran. There are people who find that there is nothing Quran relevant to their life. And there are people who think that every verse of the Quran that they read is so relevant that as if it was revealed today. It's the same Quran. Depends on your reception. If you are in your maximum of receptivity, you find every verse relevant. If your receptivity is low, you find no verse is relevant. So it's a matter of you being trained and tuned to the Quran. So what we need to do is to help our children, inshallah, and next generation to start enjoying the concepts which come in the Quran, maybe starting with the stories and then moral concepts and then theological concepts step by step, but also to see that how by acting upon the Quran, our family, our community have improved. If we just read the Quran and, you know, give them lessons on how to recite the Quran and how to pronounce and memorize the Quran, but they don't see in us commitment to the Quran, so they will not enjoy it. They have to see why we Muslims have improved. You know, if, for example, your child sees that you with Quran are not better than someone without Quran. So he thinks that then Quran is not important. Because it has not helped you. So it's very important that they see that when we have Quran, we have improved. We have less problems in our life. We have distanced ourselves from certain immoral actions, immoral practices. Then they fall in love with the Quran. Imagine, even non-Muslims, if they see that we Muslims never tell lies, never break our promises, never betray people, then they say, can you show me your book? That you must have something you know, that has changed you so much that you are so good. But if they see that, God forbid, we tell lies, we don't keep our promises, we don't, you know, show trustworthiness, our families break down, our businesses are not honest, then they don't have interest in reading our book. So we are also, I think, very influential in either giving a good image of the Quran and our religion to other people or bad image. There's the same way that um, a martyr is a necessity for being an, a prophet, um, does the same apply to an imam? So is karama a necessity for being an imam or not? <coughs> Imams also should be provided with some signs that can convince fully the people that he is a, an imam. It can be either through mu'jiza, which we call it karama in this case, or it can be by introduction of previous imam or by introduction of the prophet. For example, when prophet says that Ali is my successor, then Imam Ali doesn't need to have mu'jiza or karama. Of course, he can have, but it's not needed. Why? Because you have already established that prophet is a prophet. So if he says that Ali is my successor, that's enough. 
Imam Ali says, Imam Hassan is my successor. So that's enough. But normally, Imams had variety of proofs. Introduction of the previous Imams. They also had themselves, you know, some El Mulghayb, something that was convincing people that they have access to the knowledge of the unseen. So they had a multiple of proofs. Alaikum salam. You spoke about the Quran in terms of it being a text for all time and the reason for that. Yes. How do we then reconcile the fact that there was seemingly no emphasis on collating the various verses into a, a text, a book, in the early days of Revelation? Or even thereafter? Actually, from the beginning, the Prophet had great. Uh, concerned about this, so he had commissioned people as Kutabul Wah right from the beginning, and he was telling them to write down, and he was also telling them where to put this verse because sometimes the chapter is long and it's not that all the verses are revealed at the same time. So the Prophet was telling them that this belongs to that surah, this belongs to that surah. So by the time the Prophet passed away, we believe that the Quran was completely compiled. We don't accept that it was compiled after the Prophet. What happened after the Prophet, from our perspective, was two. One was that Amir al muminin put together Quran with Sha'an al nuzul means the stories of revelation, for example, when this verse was revealed. And also the chronological order, which verses were revealed in first year, second year, you know, like this, in Mecca, Medina. And then also, in the time of Uthman, what they did, because there were many different versions, they did Tawheed al Masahif. So he chose one edition and said others should be burnt. So they burnt other uh, editions. But uh, we believe everything was compiled in the time of the Prophet وسلم, was written down. And also many, many people had memorized the entire Quran. Just in one of the battles, Battle of Muta, 70 Hafiz of Quran were killed. It means that there were hundreds of Hafiz that just in one battle, 70 were martyred. Salam. A few classes ago. A few classes ago you mentioned about the idol worshippers. Yes. <clears throat> and one of the downsides of being an idol worshipper was they were too preoccupied with their idols and hence it didn't take them to God. Do you feel that in our in certain practices that we have with our imams as well and the shahail we have, that we could possibly be falling into the same whereby we are too preoccupied with the signposts, such as the imams, and we forget where they're signing us to. So we just concentrate so much on the imams, we forget that actually it's about Allah, it's about taking us to Allah, not about the imams itself. About the idols, I didn't say they were too much preoccupied with the idols. I said there are two problems with the idols. One is that they have no authority. Because we cannot decide what can take us nearer to God. God decides what can help us as wasila. Okay? And the other thing was, they were stuck with them. <coughs> Maybe you meant a second. With respect to anything valuable, even those things which can be wasila, we have to be careful. If anything becomes an obstacle so that you are stuck with it and not you are using it as a way to get closer to Allah, that can be harmful. Knowledge, for example. Knowledge is a very important thing. In order to get closer to Allah, you need knowledge. But the same knowledge can be hijab. Al-ilmu huwa al-hijab al-akbar. can be 
the greatest whale. Sometimes your salat can become whale. You become proud of your salat. See, oh, I am very <coughs> special, very important. Look at the way I say my prayer. Once a person was saying prayer, you know, very, you know, long, sajda, ruku. But he was alone in masjid. So a person entered masjid and saw him doing salat like this. So he said, Masha Allah, what a good salat you are doing. So this man who was saying prayer enjoyed the praise of this person. So while he was praying, he said, I am also fasting. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to praise me, praise also <laughs> my father. So this salat is an obstacle now. Yeah? So we have to be careful. First of all, to choose as wasila something which has value and can function. And secondly, not to let it become an obstacle. Use it as a means to move towards Allah, not as a means to be stopped. It's very important. Thank you for your question. Mm. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our knowledge of himself and of our relation with him and what we are supposed to do and what is our role in this world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us be with Muhammad and Ali Muhammad in this world and the hereafter and to live such a life that we would not regret except that why we didn't do more good deeds. For a moment, the only regret should be why I didn't do more good things. Not why I wasted my life. Why I didn't do good things. Why I didn't learn. We ask Allah, inshallah, to hasten the reappearance of Imam Zaman Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif and make us those Shia that our Imam would be pleased with their intentions, with their thoughts, with their performance, with their relations, and with our community, inshallah. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين